warm welcome from the Mona Circuit of Baptist Churches in Kingston, Jamaica. We greet all our regular members, friends, and especially those who are worshiping with us in chapel and online. Our theme for this month is serving God, well, for the year, is serving God from generation to generation. But our focus for this month is serving God as obeying God's sacrifice. And remember Friday, we have a look at the sacrifice. Today is Resurrection, Easter Sunday. Oh Lord, thank you, thank you. And as we commemorate, we think of Jesus, not just dying, but rising. The third day he rose. So let us tell it with that joyful voice. Death is conquered and man is free. Christ has won the victory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us stand and sing the first three choruses. Celebrate Jesus, celebrate. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. Let's celebrate our risen King. Celebrate Jesus, celebrate. You can put your hands together, we can dance. Let's celebrate our Lord.
Alléluia. Risen today. Some of the younger folks may not know it, but some of the older ones will know it. <laughs> but I want everybody to look at the words really and to sing. Christ the Lord is risen today. Ah, Alleluia. Sons of men and angels say, Ah, Alleluia. Raise your joy and joy of song. Ah, Alleluia. See. is in this one.
defeated. Thank you, Lord. He arose. And so death has been conquered. Hallelujah. 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 Let us pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our loving and our faithful Father, we come together this morning, Lord, in chapel, some of us online, so that we can celebrate, celebrate, Lord, your resurrection. We call it Easter on this Easter morning. Lord, we thank you. We really want to give you thanks that you loved us so much that you gave your one and only son to die on the cross so that we, through him, could be saved. But Lord, we thank you that the grave could not hold him. The grave could, hallelujah, it could not hold him. And so he rose triumphant. And so that today, today, Lord, we can call you Father. Come to you, Lord, with everything. Lord, we thank you that your son was able to conquer death and to live forevermore. As we, Lord, reflect on this resurrection day, may we share the love that you left for us. Because, Lord, it was only because of your love why you allowed your only son to die on the cross. And as we come together, Lord, we ask that Holy Spirit, we will focus today on worshiping you, you and you alone. Lord, there are so many distractions around us, even as we come into chapel or online. The phone, the different packages, Lord, we are carrying. So many things, Lord, that distract us. But we ask that they will all be taken away and we will focus on worship our one and true God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord for your deliverance from these distractions. So we commit today every aspect of this service, every aspect, Lord. We think of the, our praise team who is leading us, our musicians, those in the AV room, our children's choir will be hearing, and those who read the lesson, every aspect, Lord, may it be just want to worship you and to worship you only. So let us forget ourselves and to focus on the one and true living God. So we ask, Lord, that you will accept our praise and our worship through Jesus Christ, our loving King and our Father. Amen. Our responsive reading. We'll have our responsive reading now. And I'm going to ask us to stand. It will be displayed. Um, please stand for the responsive reading. Praise team, we will start as leaders. And then the congregation will respond. He has risen. He has risen indeed. indeed. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? Death has been swallowed up in victory. Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen and seen. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. For this very reason, Christ died and returned to life, so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. Jesus, 
Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Thanks be to God. God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Let us just say that last line again. Thanks be to God. For he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And amen. What a morning this is, Lord. Can you imagine um, those who were here for Friday baptism and we saw what happened and all the scripture readings. And then we had Saturday. Can you think back? Saturday. What were the people doing who believed in Jesus? What happened? Can you, you are frightened. You can imagine the fright. And then, Sunday morning, early when we go to the tomb. Yes. Let us, let us think about it. You know, we, in hindsight, we say, oh, you know, and we happy and so on. But it was not easy for them. Not easy for us either. Because sometimes we get so distracted. We forget that Christ, our living God, our King, Jesus is there pleading for us. And no sorrow, nothing can be too hard that we cannot take it to him. Let us always remember that. Our God reigns. We're going to sing some more, uh, some more hymns. We're just going to sing them once. Um, and let us look at the words. This is a beautiful song. How lovely on the mountains of the, are the feet of him. All of us like good news, right? Yes. Who bring good news, but this news is a special good news. How lovely on the mountains are the feet of him who brings
he lives and because he lives we are here today Thank you that you are alive, and because you are alive, we can come to you at any time. Thank you, Lord. And our final hymn is Thine Be the Glory, and after that, we will have a poem by our own sister, Lloyd Walters.
much. Please be seated. I just really, so many persons have come in since we did that first welcome. You are so welcome. We are happy to see you both in chapel and those online. And we pray that this will be a very good day to you all. Sister Lloyd. Let me say it again. Good morning, church. This is Resurrection Sunday. So, when it's Resurrection Sunday, we can't sit down cold, cold in church. I have as asked to do a poem for church. This poem is a love letter from Jesus to us. So just listen to it as Jesus speaking to you. When, when Mary went to the tomb and it was open, as I was saying to them in my Sunday school class this morning, it came to me this morning that the open tomb wasn't, wasn't for to let Jesus out. Jesus was already out. Jesus could walk through walls. The open tomb was for us. So the title of this poem is called, I Am Risen. I'm going to have some help today. So, help, let's go. Could you empower all the mics, please, and the musicians as well?
risen. Nothing can separate us. I am risen. 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 Oh, from Loy. Thank you, thank you. And now we are going to be blessed again with our children's choir. Let us give a hand for the children's choir.
We thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you. Give them another round of applause, please. We give the conductor one. And naturally the leaders. Thank you very, very much. Very popular, lovely song. Hallelujah. If I could sing, I would just continue that little part. But I will not do that. Thank you again, children. While we, we're going to get we're going to prepare ourselves for our prayer of confession, petition, and intercession which will be done by Brother Kevin Green. As we prepare, we are going to sing. Well, sorry, as we prepare, we are going to sing in Christ alone. You can be seated, please.
bow your heads with me. Let us pray. Lord, you are good. Your mercies are everlasting and your truth endures from generation to generation. Sovereign Lord, on a day like today, we are reminded of your awesome power. For it was a day like today, on that first Easter, that you so powerfully raised Jesus Christ from the dead. It is before you, O oh Lord, and you alone, that we collectively bow our knees, our hearts, and our wills in awe and reverence of you. Like Isaiah, we are aware that the brilliance and the light of your holy presence illuminates us spiritually, but it also reveals our sins, our moral and spiritual shortcomings. Lord, our sins are many. Individually and collectively, we have grieved you and hurt others. For every sin against our neighbor is in fact a sin against you. Lord Jesus, we regret our sins, our disobedience, and its effects. So Lord, this leads us to confess and to repent of our sins and to sincerely ask for your cleansing and for your forgiveness. And now, only because of the finished work of Christ on the cross, we can at this moment claim and confidently receive your forgiveness by faith. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy, for your grace, and for your forgiveness. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit who keeps us daily as we journey with you and in you. Lord, your resurrection is why we, your disciples, and indeed all of humanity, have a living hope today. Lord Jesus, by the power of your Holy Spirit, show us how to live out the hope we have in you, such that our lives will reflect your love and your grace daily. Lord, we place before you the new members who joined this, our fellowship, on Good Friday. Lord, we pray that you will imbue them with the power of your spirit so that they will increase daily in their faith and remain resolute in their decisions to live for you. We pray that they may find friends and mentors in our midst who will journey with them as we all journey with you together. Lord, we ask a special blessing of protection, of courage and wisdom and foresight upon our pastor and the leaders of and the leaders who so faithfully serve your people in this congregation. Lord, renew their desire to serve. Strengthen them and pour out your spirit in power and humility upon them. Lord, we pray for peace where there is turmoil and war. We pray for relief where there is suffering. We pray for hope where there is despair. 
and we pray for forgiveness where there is resentment and hatred. We pray for healing where there is sickness and disease. And we trust now, Lord, that you have heard us. For it is in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, that we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. And now we receive our tithes and offering, um, ushers. Lord, I lift your name and I'm going to sing that. You sing it? You want to sing it? Lord, we lift thy name and I'll just play it. Okay, okay. He's risen and he sits on the throne and has given us mercies and pardon. He has allowed us to give and thank you, Lord, to those who give and blessings to those who have not given. It's from our abundance that we give and allow us to use what we have been given to the mercy and glory to your name. Thank you. Amen. Amen. 
And now we go to the ministry of the word. The first scripture lesson is taken from the gospel according to Matthew chapter 27, verses 57 to 66. And that will be read by Brother Melvin Miller. And then the second scripture lesson, Matthew 28, verses 1 to 10, will be read by Sister Jasmine Williams. And Matthew 28, verses 11 to 20, will be read by Deacon Aikolina Maracu. Is uh, Melvin here? Good morning, church. This morning, scripture reading will be taken from Matthew 27, verse 57 to 66. As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting there opposite the tomb. The next day, the one after preparation day, the chief priests and the Pharisees went to Pilate. Sir, they said, we remember that while he was still alive, that deceiver said, after three days I will rise again. So give the order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciple may come and steal the body and tell the people that he has been raised from the dead. This last deception will be worse than the first. Take a guard. Pilate answered, go, make the tomb as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting the guard. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, church. The scripture reading will be taken from Matthew 28, verses 1 to 10. After the Sabbath at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angle of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as as snow, the guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, he has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay, then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead. And is going ahead of you into Galilee, there you will see him, not now I have told you. So the woman hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him and clasped his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. When the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, you are to say, 
His disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. We really want to thank the readers. And the last two you saw here was mentor and mentee. We still have that program going. Thank you very much, um, readers. And now we'll be blessed with a hip, with a song by our sister Corinne Fraser. And the next voice we hear, please keep him in our prayers, is our own pastor, Reverend Jennings, who will bring the word to us. Morning, saints. Morning, saints. Good morning, saints. Testing, testing. One, two, three. Thank Jesus for the blood. Because there's nothing stronger than the wonder-working power of the blood. Hallelujah. 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 Wrong, 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 wrong track. Wrong track. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood. I'd ask my son to give it to them, you know, but he made a little mistake. He got the wrong track. So bear with us. He's coming. He's giving it to them. Thank Jesus for the blood that was shed on Calvary so many years ago. And the power that blood has given is which has caused us to be here this morning. He has redeemed us back to himself, the Father. Because of our sins, we were not able to go to God the way we should. But Jesus made it possible. from 
the darkness into glorious light. You took my place, laid inside my tomb of sin. You were buried for three days, but then you walked right out again. And now death has no sting, and life has no end. For I have been redeemed by the blood of For the night. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You have washed me white. Thank you, Jesus. You have saved my life. Brought me from the darkness into glorious light. For the blood of life, thank you, Jesus, washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my life. Brought me from the darkness into glory. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Yes, there to my heart was the blood of light. Glory to his name. Thank you, Sister Corrine, for again reminding us of the significance of Jesus' death and resurrection. Church people use language like the blood, and we wonder why we have such a bloody religion. But the truth is that the blood of Jesus Christ is far more significant than any other blood that exists, not merely because of who he is, but because of what he means. He's the savior of the world who died for the sins of the world because of the sins of the world, but God raised him up. And Resurrection Sunday, which we celebrate today, is to say God raised him up never more to die. Lord over sin, Lord over Satan, Lord over self, Lord over death. And it is that Lord we present to you. So I greet you today in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, and we welcome you this Resurrection Sunday. The message that we preach today is from the 
familiar texts which were well read just now by our readers from Matthew 27, 62 to 66 and Mark 28, 1 to 20. And today we have entitled the message, The Guardians, the Governors, the Guards, and God. And all of those are not made up by me, they're actually in the story. The children sung about them, the readers read about them, or intercessory prayer person, Brother Kevin, prayed. And so all we want to do is to highlight these persons in the Easter story, as it is called, and ask God to help us to see how important and how relevant this is for us today. And so we're going to bow our heads for a quick prayer, and then we get right into our message today. Our God in heaven, we thank you because in a real way you are telling us the old, old story of Jesus and his love. And yet you want to remind us and refresh us. And for some of us, tell us some things that we perhaps did not know before. Lord, you do not want us just to have information. You want us to be changed by what we hear. You want us to act upon what we would have come to know. You want us to be better because we would have spent time studying your word as part of worship. We pray, therefore, that you might do all this and more and we might respond as we should. Give us clarity, clearness of mind and thought. Give us strength. Give us wisdom. Give us a spirit of obedience. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen and amen. My brothers and sisters, I want us to recognize as we look particularly at verses 62 to 66 that after Jesus was crucified on the Friday, the next day was a Saturday, the Sabbath in Jewish religious life. And on the Sabbath, the chief priests and the Pharisees, who are not supposed to do anything but worship God, who are not supposed to walk more than a quarter of a mile, whose own law said that if you carried a needle on your person and you walked for more than a quarter of a mile, you are breaking the Sabbath. These chief priests and Pharisees walked from where they lived and went to meet Pilate in the governor's palace, which was over a mile away, to do what? To worship? To tell them about Jesus and his love? His salvation on the cross? No! These men who we saw on Friday were some crooked politicians in religious guise went to Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that that liar, meaning Jesus, was still a even worse than the first. So Pilate says, Take a God, go and make the tomb as secure as you can. So they left and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and leaving the guard, more than one of them, on watch. That's the beginning of our text this morning. That's where we get the story from, the, the, the title. The guardians, the governor, and the guards. The guardians are the chief priests and the Pharisees, the elders. They are the guardians of what we can call the status quo, of things to remain as they were 
where they were the top anarchists in charge of people's lives and destiny, making the most money out of religion, but not caring about people's souls. And today they are not just the guardians, we see them as the instigators. It is them who go to Pilate, not Pilate who goes to them. They decided that they were going to go to Pilate to make sure that that liar doesn't prove them wrong, but that he stays dead and buried. Guardians, not of the people, but of their own well-being. <clears throat> so with that, you have the governor. The governor is the one who has the authority, you see. So they have to go to him. So Pilate, the governor, is the authorizer. You take a guard. I give you permission to take a guard. That don't mean one security guard, I want to emphasize. A guard in that time was at least six soldiers. All in military hardware. Elite soldiers, I may add, of the Roman Praetoria. Take a guard and make the, the tomb as secure as you can. He is the authorizer. But the guards are the enforcers. Anytime you say police and security guard, they are enforcing somebody else's will. Other people employ them, but they have to do what the people say. They are the enforcers. These guys are the ones who enforce it because they make the tomb secure by putting a seal on it. The seal is not a stamp. The seal is a long satin scarlet cloth from top to bottom secured by ropes and iron pegs to make sure nothing goes in or out. And then they guard it. Hard work, because the grave was not this little eight foot, nine foot thing that we have now. It's more like what they call a sepulcher, a big cave with a big stone that you put in place and then they seal it and then they guard it. So here we have it, the guardians, the governor and the guards. But that's not the only person in the story, is it? There is one person that we have to talk about, and his name is God. And you know the story, don't it? After Sabbath, after the Saturday, on Sunday morning, a Sunday morning like today, as it was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. Other Gospels tell us they went to put on spices on the body because the body didn't get the chance to be spiced. And the spice was important because it kept the body in place. Before you had embalming cream and the modern things we had, you used spices, particularly myrrh, frankincense, cinnamon, to put on a body to keep that body as long as possible so it wouldn't smell. And you could actually go to the tomb for a few weeks to pay tribute. And so when they went to do that, it says suddenly there was a violent earthquake. Now, do you remember the last earthquake that we had here in Jamaica, the big one? When people jumped off a building and broke their foot. You remember that one? Think about that one. The Bible says this was not just an earthquake, but a violent one. Major. An angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled the stone away, and sat on it. His appearance was like night lightning. His clothes was as white as snow. And it says the guards were so afraid that they trembled and became like dead men. For they had seen a doppie, they thought. But it was God who sent this angel. 
And the angel spoke to him and said, what? You must not be afraid. I know who you're looking for. You're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. That's the resurrection story. He has been raised just as he said. Come here and see the place. He was like, go look at it for yourself. And they looked. And they said, come now and tell his disciples quickly. He has been raised from the dead and now he's going to Galilee ahead of you. There you will see him. Remember what I have told you. My friends, they left the tomb in a hurry, afraid, filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Then Jesus met them suddenly, saying the same thing, peace be with you, don't be afraid. They fell at his feet, worshiping him, says, go and tell my brothers to go to the disciples, and there they will see me, those 11 disciples. My friends, you know this story, so what else can we say? There are some things you know already. <laughs> that God overcame the gods. You see, these men were trained to God. And God means not only to protect, but to keep. These men were trained to keep things as they were, to make sure Jesus was dead and stayed dead. And that anybody who tried to get him out of that grave, his body, would be killed too. And that's why God had to use violence. Because the only language of violence to understand is violence. You understand that? If God did come to them and say, beg you, please, 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 let out Jesus out of the grave, they would never do it. only language these people understood was violence. They saw somebody bigger than them. My God is bigger than. Bigger than. Bigger than the Roman gods. He overcame those gods. And it says they trembled and fell as dead men because they recognized they were in the presence of superior power. We take it for granted, we just read it, but we don't understand what was happening that day. If you don't put yourself back in it, for the first time, as it were, these guys were overcome by God. They were not the only ones, though, who were <laughs> in trouble. The guardians were in trouble. Remember now, you know, they, they had gone to Pilate, gone to Pilate. And said, Pilate, put in the guard. So when they realized, as the soldiers went back and into the city and told the chief priests everything that happened, they again met, upset. What do we do? What do we do? So the Bible says they plotted and planned again. You wonder if these guys had any time to worship God. You wonder if these guys had any time to lead anybody to the Lord. Because every time you see them, it's plot and plan, them plotting. Read the Gospels all the way through. They are planners, but not just planners, plotters. And here they are plotting. What are they plotting? They said, boy, you know, this man has really come from the dead. We cannot allow people to really think that he came from the dead. So what will we do? They gave a large sum of money. That was the plan. Bribe off the soldier them. And you are to say, here's what you are to say, that his disciples came during the night and stole his body while you were asleep. Now tell me, how would that look if I was a big soldier? If I was a security and then brought into the church? Yeah? And thief things. And I was on duty. And then you go tell me that me must tell people that them rocking at the church while I was sleeping. But it is the desperate way that people will go at any length to protect and to guard their own status, their own money, their own power that will make people tell lie on themselves. in order to make them look good and to sweeten it you give them a large sum of money more money than them earn in a year you give them in an hour Come on, 
How upset are these guys? Very upset. You don't see the word upset there, but they are very, very, very upset because the liar proved them to be liars. Jesus proved them to be wrong. He was raised and them couldn't know nothing about it but try to bribe our people. Well, <laughs> they were upset. Furthermore, they said, and if the governor should hear anything about this, no worry yourself. We'll convince him. Yeah, right. No trouble. <laughs> Speaking about the governor, it's not just the guardians, not just the guards, but the governor. The governor, the governor, his governance was undermined. That means that although him looked like he was a big governor, ruler of everybody, guess what? Him couldn't rule Jesus. <laughs> because this was the prisoner that got away. And if Rome heard about he, that prisoners were getting away under his watch, he would have been recalled and replaced. By the way, he was recalled and replaced within six years of crucifying Jesus. Within six years. Because the Jesus thing spread to Rome and they heard and they said, but wasn't he crucified on top on the you Pontius Pilate dead and buried what is this weird that he rose and among other things when they heard about this Jesus thing spreading around they call him back and say come you have no use we don't need people like you to rule on our behalf go home back to pastor retire so he went into early retirement pilot Pontius Pilate we have not on record because of this undermine him so whatever convincing they convince him Rome his bosses were not convinced after a while God undermined the governor as he can undermine every government and every opposition that ever exists because God are God you know God are God we don't remember that, but God had God. So God overcame the gods, upset the guardians, and undermined the governor. Can I just say a little more, and then we're going to apply it to ourselves, for this is a short sermon compared to Good Fridays. See it there again. But I want to understand that all of these people, in their own planning, were actually against God. It might not look like that to you, but you see, God had his own plan. But they were planning against God's plan. Amen. And so what we have here in this story is that gods who were the shocked and the scared. These gods, shocked at what they saw. Scared that they would lose their lives. For they would lose their lives for not guarding Jesus properly. These guys ran to the guys and said, guys, what do we do? Chief priest, what do we do? Here they are, the shocked and the scared. And here we have the priests who were the bold and the bribers. They were bold, but they were bribers. You know, friends, you can be bold in doing evil. You can be bold in doing evil. These men were not afraid to do what was wrong. Bribing, imagine. The law of Moses that they subscribe to says you must not bribe anybody. You must give justice even to the poor and needy. And yet they were not interested in doing that. They were interested in bribing, breaking their own law and bore with it. As we say in Jamaica, they were beer face. That's what you have here. And here we have Pilate again, convinced but a coward. Remember we said on Friday that Pilate was a coward. That these people could convince him because if he did otherwise, they would report him to his bosses in Rome. So Pilate was really a coward. Pilate never wanted to know that Jesus raised from the dead. He just wanted to know say everything is all right. Everything was peaceful and calm that this Jesus won't be any more trouble. He was not interested about God raising from the dead what this meant. 
He, he, he just wanted a peaceful life. But he was a coward. Here's something else. Then we're going to talk about us today. I'm going to mention the group. The group. Which group? The Bible tells us that the guards took the money, did what they were told. And it says, and so is the report spread around by the Jews to this day. To the time of writing, there were Jewish people who were saying that Jesus' body was stole, stolen from the grave at night by the disciples, but that he never rose from the dead. So that if you see an empty tomb, it's because them thief the body. So it moved from just Pilate and the chief priests and the few guards to a lot of people. There was collusion. And for many, that was a conclusion. I want to say something. That if you don't deal with certain lies early, they spread and cause evil to perpetuate for a long time. A little lie can become a big lie. A little untruth can become a big untruth. What is a lie among people spread as a rumor can destroy many other people and distort the truth. And so this is what was happening. People started to say from the beginning, Jesus did not re was not raised from the dead. And even to this day, there are people, not just Jewish people, but there are people who don't believe nothing about Jesus raised from the dead, nothing. That when you stay dead, you're dead. That any empty tomb is because a stolen body. But is this a conclusion? Not so with God. God come again. Says the guardians and the group and the governor and the guards might be against me. But guess what? I am going to go on the go. I am not waiting for people to tell whether it's true or not. I am going to tell the truth myself through my disciples. So I want us to understand that what happens in the final section of the chapter from verses 16 to 20 is about what I call this morning God on the go. God on the go. You know that you have, like you go to the gas station and they talk about grab and go? Hmm? Or you go to a little place like you, they just give you something to go? Well, God says, I'm giving you something to go with. So what we say now is something for us to go with when we leave here in a few minutes. God is on the go. God meets through Jesus, his disciples. Having said go to Galilee, they go and then he meets them there. Galilee was several miles from Jerusalem. It was actually about nearly 80 miles. And he meets them there. And he says to them, listen, I have been given authority, verse 18, in heaven and earth. Therefore, to all peoples everywhere, go. And this says, making them my disciples, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit, and teach them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. I want you to understand what this is about. This is about a God who says, counter the rumor, broadcast the resurrection. Counter the rumor. Broadcast the resurrection. What rumor? You remember what we just said a while ago? That the guys were spreading this rumor that Jesus was not raised from the dead, but what? That, that the disciples came and stole his body during the night. That was a well-placed rumor designed to destroy Jesus' reputation. Designed to make God look bad. But God did something about it. 
God does not take evil lying down. Can I tell you that? God does not allow evil just to continue. No matter how you see the world bad and wicked, God is always doing something about it. And resurrection is about a God who is doing something about it. Because God in Jesus met his disciples and said, listen, I want you to counter the rumor for me and to broadcast the resurrection. When we use words like proclaim, you know what we're really saying? Broadcast. You know, like you broadcast something on TV? Or when I was growing up, Brother Williams, when I was growing up, you know, in country, and I see two of my sisters from the same country that I was in. We'll welcome you later. You remember that we had, we never had, most of us never had TV. Few of us had transistor radios. So our broadcast was a human being. For us in Frankfield, it was one human being, a man called Stanley. And Brother Stanley had a loud voice. He never even had a bullhorn. He had a loud voice. And he would walk and he says, Brothers and sisters of Frankfield, the Honorable Minister of Education, the Honorable Edwin Allen is coming by you. No, if you understand that we lived on hills and in valleys far away. But when Brother Stanley spoke, his voice echoed on the hills. And everybody heard it. He was broadcasting the news. That's how we got our news. Most of it. 80% of it. So anybody telling a room about something, Brother Stanley would correct it because he would broadcast it. Became a member of our church many years later. Broadcasting it. That's what we're called to do. We're called to broadcast it. Here's what Jesus did in the first place. He com comforted the women through the angel and sent them to tell his 11 male apostles that Jesus was risen from the dead. So the angels told the women, and they were the first evangelists. The first ones. Women. Women, I tell you, big up yourself. The women were the first ones. Before Peter do it, before John do it, before James do it, Mary Magdalene was doing it. The other Mary was doing it. Jesus was risen from the dead. Then Jesus came to the 11. Why we say 11, not 12? Judas had hung himself by then. But Jesus comforted them and told them that God had given him all authority and therefore they should go and disciple all kinds of people. You know what we translate as go and make disciples of all nations? I was reading this thing when I was preparing this message earlier this week again. I was reading it in the original Greek language and I never recognized something. Jesus never just said, go and make disciples. He said, go and disciple all kinds of people. Nations mean all kinds of people. So not just Africa, Asia, wherever, but rich people, poor people, educated people, not so educated people, men, women, all kinds of people, go and disciple them. And as you do that, baptize them. In the name of the Father, through the Son, by the Holy Spirit. That's what it actually says when it says the name of the Father and the Son. It's name of the Father, through the Son, by the Spirit. Teaching people to do everything that he had commanded his followers to do. And if you want to know what that everything is, read the Gospels from chapter 1 right back. And he assures them that he would be with them always. So, what does that mean for us? As we're coming to that, I want us to go back to these guardians, governors, and the guards. The resurrection means something. It means that even though there are people who are trying to keep things as they are, some things people blessed and some people cursed, some people rich, some people poor, some people forgiven, some people not forgiven, God says no. I am going to resist and to subvert, sub, subvert and I'm going to upset the upper cart. That poor people can receive salvation, not because they're poor, 
Because if salvation was a thing that money could buy, the rich would live and the poor would die. But Jesus says, no! Everybody must have the opportunity to be saved. Everybody must have the opportunity to be healed. Everybody must have the opportunity to be forgiven. Everybody must have the opportunity to be educated, to come into the light of God. Everybody must have the opportunity for a better life. Jesus says the resurrection is about God changing individuals, institutions, and ideas. That will change people one person at a time, but we will change politics, we change the family life, we will change the religious life, we'll change the economic and money life. Everything that can be changed, we will change it in the resurrected power of Jesus. That's what he says. Every idea that exalts itself against the true and living God, we will throw it down. Because we have come to change things. Resurrection is not about keeping things the same. It's about changing things. Changing people. And God changes through the miraculous as well as through the mundane. What I mean by that? When you read the passages again and read them again, when Jesus said, it is finished on the cross, Matthew tells us that people came out of their graves. You didn't say that? You heard it Good Friday and I heard somebody gasp and say, what? While it was being read up here. Yes. Yes. So God changes people through miraculous. So, so, so when God changes, miracles happen. People are raised from the dead. You doubt it? I have seen that. God has used my ministry to raise people physically from the dead. People who them give over on them flatline. And God says, go pray for them. And the heart start beat again. Not because of me, but because of the miraculous power of God. So God can do that. But in the mundane, in the ordinary everyday things, God can help us. Like to change a habit. Like to provide the bus fare to come church. God is that kind of God too. Resurrection power comes in all of this. And that's what we need to broadcast people to the world. That God can change things. For the better. And so I just want, as we're ending, to ask us to do this. God is saying to you and to me, counter the rumor. Don't try to tell me that God is dead. He woke me up this morning. Broadcast the resurrection. By lip and by life. God never just make you come to church today for feel good. God says, I want you to know me and my resurrected power and to live it out. That change is possible. That you are sick like Deacon Carleon one time, but God has healed you enough to be in church today. Are you hearing what I'm trying to say? This is not just about hearing a story. This is about how we're going to live it. And, and God not only said, I, I wanted to tell you about life. I want you to have life. And so, so he gave me something last night when I was finishing the sermon. And he says, write it and put it in. He says, tell people that I have given them life. Have life. Navigate life. Change life through all of life. Have life. Hear what Jesus says to us now, not just to them only. All authority has been given to me. Who is me? The risen one. Jesus. And as the Father has given me life, I am giving the same life to you. So we are not just people with physical life, but when we come to know Jesus, we have resurrected life in us. Not even when we don't feel so good. We still have a strength and something inside so strong that keeps us going. It's the life of God in Jesus Christ. It's a resurrected life. That's what it means to be a Christian. To be raised with Christ in newness of life. To have life. I want people to know that. Do you have that life, friends? That sometimes you feel weak and you feel like you can't make it. 
And he said, Jesus, one more time. One more time. And he gives you the strength to go through one more time. Am I talking to somebody? Is there somebody that can say amen with me? Have life, have life. You have life in Jesus. And you must draw on it. Draw on it. These men and these women, they, 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 they were poor. They were afraid. They were scared. Some had denied all, forsook him and fled. But when they met Jesus, there was something that changed. So you see them on Pentecost, bold as a lion, strong as an ox, speaking like they were never afraid. It's because of the resurrection life. You can have that. I need that. We all need that. We are meant to have life. And then we are meant to navigate life. Jesus says, not just go. He says, as you go. Now, there's a big difference. When it goes, it sounds like we are going on a special missionary journey. Like special missionaries like Brother Dirk and Sister Carol. They are very special to us. But guess what? It's not those special missionaries are required to go. Jesus is saying, as you go. Meaning that as you go through life, as you go market yesterday, and as you will go supermarket another day, as you go down on the street, as you go meet your friend, as you call upon the phone, as you go through life, share my life with other people. Are you with me? So you don't have to be no trained missionary to share the life with Jesus. You don't have to have no person color to share the life of Jesus. Are you hearing what I'm trying to say? We do need specialists. We do need full time like Brother Dirk, Sister Carol. But everybody is supposed to be a missionary who is a child of God, who is a Christian. Are you hearing me? Children, you're not too young to do that. Tell people about the Lord. Show people that God can do things for you. When you get better, when you're sick, tell them that the Lord raised you up. Because there's a lot of rumor out there. There's a lot of lie to say that Jesus dead. Him can't do it. It's a whole, whole story business. What kind of thing that... But friends, we are here to say... As you go through life. And what are we to do? Change life. Change life. Say that with me. Change life. We're not just called to live life. We're called to change life. We're called to change other people's lives. As you go disciple all kinds of people. All kinds of people, you know, friends. The people who need it. People who are struggling with their sexuality. People who are struggling with, with, with hurt and pain. And, and Jesus is saying, listen. Go and disciple them. Heal them in the name of Jesus. Love them in the name of Jesus. Encourage them. Turn the life around. This is not a passing thing only. This is every Christian. Are you hearing what I'm trying to say? You have somebody at your workplace who need a prayer. You call pastor. The number that you're calling is not available. Please leave a message. What are you going to do? Wait till you get pastor to pray for the person now. In your workplace, no man, Jesus put life in you, and you might not know, have no big words, these, those, and dies, but you can say, Jesus, let me pray to you, let me pray. I beg you, in the name of Jesus, heal my co worker. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We're called to disciple all kinds of people, all of us. That's resurrection, it's not just a concept. It's a reality that works in change. So one of the ways in which you mark your Christian life is, if it is effective, is if God is using you just by how you live to change people. When you leave the workplace, them cry, them say, Lord, we never get a co-worker like this. She kind, you see. He look after people, you see. He no mean, you know. And always when you see him, a word of prayer and a word of encouragement. Would they miss you like that? Or would them say, boy, praise God, I'm gone. Friends, we need to change life. And Jesus wants us to do it all through life, all through life, all through life. For what does he say? Lo, I am with you always. Even to the end of the age, my friends, the Lord will be with us all the way through, even in the valley of the shadow of death. He will be with us. Are you hearing what I'm trying to say? 
the changing seas of our lives when we go and we're looking at the mirror and say my god wrinkle <laughs> You look and say, my goodness, gray hair. Or you look on some old picture, you remember when you had a big afro, right there, right? Like myself here. And you look now, you see the low and it can't come out. The barber finished with you in five minutes. And you realize you're moving on. But the Lord said, the God who was with you when you had afro, high afro, is the God with you with the low hair. The God who was with you when you had black hair is the God who is with you when you have gray hair. Because even down to old age, I be with you. God wants somebody to know that he is with us. That's resurrection. So even when the outer body is fading away, the inner person is being renewed day by day by day. Because we have resurrection power, resurrection life within us. That's what he wants us to remember. I think we're forgetting it. Forgetting it, so we're grumbling and complaining like everybody else, me included. But God has to say to me, Stephen Jennings, stop the grumbling, stop the complaining. You have life in Jesus. And I will be with you as you navigate life to help you change your life and to change the life of others. And I'll be with you all through life. So we say, have life, navigate life, change life all through life. Because, my friends, God is about changing, changing, changing. And so here's the magnificence of the resurrection. And I end with this. The resurrection is an inconvenient truth. <laughs> it's a truth that is not what everybody wants to hear or to know. They want things to just remain the same. They want people to live in misery and violence and wickedness. Stabbing up them one another, shooting and killing. You know, a lot of people make money of violence, of death, of sickness. Think about it. A lot of the medical profession, pharmaceutical profession, police force, a lot of money spent on these things. Jesus says, I have not come for death, I have come for life. But if I start do the thing, it's going to change up some things and it will be inconvenient. Some places might shut down. Some professions might have to reorient because I have come for what? Life. Life. And I'm sending my disciples to give life. It's an inconvenient truth. Some people will not like it. Some people will not like you or me when we start living out the life inconvenient but guess what it might be inconvenient but it is irresistible irresistible that power that caused the stone to roll away that frightened the gods that power when God works in a life even though they don't like it they cannot resist it it's a man called Stephen for whom I'm named when he spoke before these same chief priests, these same elders, these same scribes, a few years later, they looked at him and they recognized that he had been with Jesus. And the Bible tells us they could not resist the spirit by which he spoke. Listen, when that life is in you, they might not like you. They might not agree with you. They might even want to shut you down, but they cannot resist the truth. They might try to suppress it and bury it, but they cannot resist the truth. For 2,000 years, they have been trying to shut down Jesus, keep him in the grave, shut him down as dead to guard his grave, but they cannot. No grave could hold his body down. No power on earth can resist God's truth, they will shut it down. But it will come back up like a seed, like a plant, pushing against the sod, marveling at the wisdom of our God. And finally, it's an inspirational truth. And the word inspiration doesn't mean it means to inspire, to fill us. You know, like on tire flat. Anybody have a flat tire in a vehicle with a flat tire? And then you get a pump and you pump it up and the air go inside of the tire and it get back big again or like a balloon well that's the word inspire inspire means that we are flat 
Life has punctured us. Some of we come to church and we just feel like we can't manage. We're tired. But here comes Jesus. By the Holy Spirit pumping us up. With the pump of the resurrected life. And saying no matter how flat you are. I can give you new life. I can help to get your tire back on the road. I can help you move again. I can help you to go again because I am that. And not just on a Sunday, but any given day. Not just on Resurrection Sunday, but any given day. Are you hearing me? So before you go to your bed at night, and when you wake up in the morning, say, Lord, pump up my tire. Pump up my tire, God. Pump. All when you have no vehicle. Say to God, pump up my tire. Because you know you're not talking about the tire. You're talking about you. Don't it? Inspirational truth. Because he lives, man. I can face tomorrow. That's the resurrection. That's the resurrection. So what are we going to do, friends? We're going to counter the rumor. And we're going to broadcast the resurrection. That resurrection that is an inconvenient truth. An irresistible truth. But an inspirational truth. Don't make the guardian and them stop you. Don't make the God stop you. Don't make the governor stop you. Don't make the group stop you. Keep going on. Keep going on. For one day, one day, one day, one day. There will be a new heavens, new earth. Resurrection life will flood the universe. This is the first fruit. But it will continue. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. In Jesus' name. Amen. Alleluia. you to know as we sing another song hallelujah you have won the victory I, I want you to understand this you know familiarity breeds contempt we can hear this story all the time and say yeah 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 but what does that mean practically for you I tried to make it practical I tried to say that listen if as we go through life we have stuff this world is full of things that, that lead to deadness then your spirit, then your dreams, then even your physical body, then your relationships. But Jesus has come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And that's not just a rhetoric. We're not just supposed to say that because we're supposed to preach and resurrect so and so. We can tell you practically. We can tell you practically. Sickness, financial embarrassment, exam we couldn't pass. Relationship that we couldn't cross, spiritual barriers, and God 
broke through them one at a time. Am I, am I talking to somebody here this morning? I, I first, I, I wanted, I, I, the Spirit said, talk to the Christians in the house first and online. Remind them of your heritage, your resurrection heritage. We focus so much on the sin that led Jesus to the cross. We forgot about the resurrection power. Every Sunday we meet, we celebrate it. Resurrection power and life. And the problem, the Lord says, is that we're not drawing on that life. And we're not living out the life. So the world have a problem believing about Jesus. That he is not just another teacher, but he's a risen savior. People, we need some resurrected people. Ask the Lord to give you life. Give you a fresh life. Fresh life. Don't say that, Lord, give me a fresh life. Christians and all, fresh life, fresh life. Fresh life, fresh life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then I'm talking to somebody who has never, ever experienced his life. You might grow up into church like I did. You might hear the story. You might even read the scripture. But you don't fully understand that Jesus has come to give you life. You have life already, physical life, but there's something called eternal life. The life of eternity that starts now and continues in the hereafter. That you don't even have to worry about many things because there's something strong inside of you. That something is the Lord and His power. He has won the victory. So we're going to sing that one through. And I want to invite anybody who wants to come, particularly if you have not ever given your life to the Lord and you want to give Him as your Lord and Savior, say, Lord, bring your resurrected life in me. Come forward, we pray for you. If you're a Christian already and you want to come, we pray for you too. If you want to stay where you are, just raise your hand online in chapel, do that. No forcing, but what I want us is respond to it. He's not here. He is risen. <laughs> He's risen. Let him rise in your hearts today. Let him Oh, hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Why? You, you, say, you say, oh, God working. The man them not for waiting on the man them want to come. Come, sir, get up here. Get up here with your brothers. Because God is doing his work. God is doing his work. We must just do ours. Proclaim Jesus as if I be lifted up. I draw men. All people to me. We need to disciple. We need disciples. Thank God for you, brothers. Thank God for you, sister. God bless you. And so we're going to sing hallelujah one more time. That song, a different song. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. And then we're just going to pray for you. Oh, Christian. Oh, my brother. God bless you, man. God bless you. He can't stand beside us. We are here by His name.
God is doing. You see, some of us have heard this every Easter <laughs> for as long as we're born. So it don't mean much to us now, but for somebody, this is the first time they're hearing so clearly. God is speaking, friends, and we must take every opportunity, every opportunity to disciple all kinds of people, to teach them, to baptize them. We need to do that, friends. The rumors are there, some of them on our texts. Some of them on our phones, them yes. look nice and them package, but this room officer said, Jesus is dead. Yes. God can't make no difference in your life. Yes. Put it back to the hell that it comes from. Yes. The liar that is speaking against Jesus as a liar. He is not dead. He is risen. Resurrected power. The best way to broadcast that is in our life. So we praise God. So now shall we just pray, friends? And then we just have a quick announcement and then we just close with prayer and benediction lord we just thank you oh thank you that you are still the risen lord in the saving business and you say lord go into all the world and preach the gospel discipling your people as we go today lord go with us and help us to go with you to give God on the go to people, to the taxi that we will take today, mm, and the bus that we will take today, to the friend we will call today, the person we'll have for dinner today. Lord, over this weekend, this Monday morning, when people are going to enjoy themselves in carnival and all kinds of things. Yes, sir. Help us to remember the season, reason for the season. It is the resurrected Jesus. And may we live it out. We don't have to be churchy every day, Lord. We don't have to dress up every day. We can be in our shorts, but we must live out for Jesus. Proclaim Jesus. Broadcast Jesus. And the resurrected power of Jesus. Forgive us, Lord, especially those of us who are your children, for not living out that life of power. For being bad advertisements for the risen Christ. Pump up our tires, God. Renew our spirit. Refresh us. We thank you for this worship service that we could just rejoice in you. We thank you for every single one who has served today. And we bless you, the children and those who prepare them, the readers, the leader, the musicians, the singers, the AV persons. We thank you for everyone. And we just bless you now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Sit for two minutes. Two minutes. After two minutes, you can stand up. <laughs> All right. All right. So we bless God. Let's just give you a quick announcement. First announcement. We welcome all first-time visitors. Anybody coming for the first time here? Yes. Stand up, please. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Or shall I just hear somebody here? Oh, wonderful. Four first-time visitors here. We welcome everybody. Thank you. We get your name after her, but thank you. And whoever invited you, thank you for being here. God bless you. Come back again when you can, even if it's not Easter Sunday. Then we want to welcome those who have been here for a long time. Anybody who hasn't been here for a long time, we're not going to make you feel bad. But if you have been here for a long time, welcome, man. Welcome. Easter is a good day to come back. Welcome. Welcome. Sit. Hey, welcome. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Uh, uh, there's, there's a past Christian Pitney course. I've been christening a lot of Pitney's. Um, 
Two of my sisters are here. Now you know I have a sister named Laura, a sister named Grace. But we have two sisters who, though they were not our blood sisters, they were sisters because they were part of our family. And my mother always said, these are my two daughters. So I want to ask Irene and Edna to stand. Irene is coming all the way from Canada, Edna from Edgewater. Those are my two sisters, our two sisters. They are sisters to each other, <laughs> but they are, they, are, they are sisters to us, right? And we thank God for it. Welcome, Sister Irene. You join us online regularly. But thanks for coming in person today. God bless you to Edna for bringing her. Then, just to tell you this evening, what are we having this evening, friends? The bread man, all right? The bread man. That's our, our drama production, 5.30 here in chapel. Physically, it's also going to be online. Ah, uh, sorry. What is that? Oh, sorry, I didn't see the weights. I didn't see the weights. Um, Ruth and, and, and Kofi, thank you. God bless both of you. All the way from, where you live now? Ghana still? From Ghana? Welcome. From welcome. All right. Thank you so much. I didn't see you. Sorry, you know, I would not have overlooked you, especially since I, I did the deed many years ago of your wedding. So God bless you. Good to see you. So we have the bread man and Easter play on this evening, 5.30, physically here upstairs in our, our, our theater. What, what we call it now, we have a special name for it. It's a theater. And then on, it's online as well. So if you physically can't come, watch it on our Mona Baptist Church YouTube channel. Bring my brother Mark Jennings. And the admission is bring a friend. Bring a friend. That's all you need to do. Bring a friend. All right? No, no, no charge for it. Just come. Then on Wednesday evening, we have Bible study. We start a four-week series called resurrection themes for the next four weeks we just want to look at what the resurrection means and we want to invite you there then on the 21st 20th and the 21st we have our harvest thanksgiving and self-denial the 20th the saturday we have prayer meeting and the harvest sale here in the morning and then sunday we are going to bring other gifts and we're going to bring monetary offerings as part of self-denial and speaking of that birth month leaders you are asked to meet with Sister Elizabeth Blake, the coordinator of our harvest uh, service. Sister Blake, meet with her afterwards. So all birth month meeting leaders, meet with her for a few minutes after, please. Then two final things. We want to offer condolence to Brother Ambrose and Brother Seymour Walters. They have lost a loved one. Brother Ambrose lost his brother. Brother Seymour lost his uncle. Same person. And they lost, he died on Good Friday. And we want to uh, remember the family in our prayer. Then there's a funeral service for uh, Mr. Messam, who is the husband of one of our sisters who passed many years ago, Sister Isolin Messam. Her husband died, and the funeral is this Wednesday at 10 a.m. here at church. I just want to ask us do we have bulletins? If we have bulletins, there are some people we need to say happy birthday to. Brother Bradley Brown, if you're here, stand up. Rosemary Johnson Francis, Jonathan Miller, Goldia Watson, Edia Copeland Solas, who is in Canada, Sister Keisha Gay Anderson, is Keisha here today, probably in the country. Um, Brother Andre Vaughan Millen, Sister, Brother Pierre Smith, who lives abroad. Brother Christopher, who lives abroad. Sister Marvin, who lives abroad. Sister Havel, he is a Gibson, who lives abroad, but who is here, Sadie. Happy birthday to you when it comes. And my mother-in-law, Sister Cherry White, whose birthday is tomorrow. Tomorrow is April Fool's, but she will tell you she's a fool for Christ. Right. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we welcome her and give her a happy birthday greetings. And the other thing I want us to look at when we have the time is the mental, tip, mental health tips. The mental health tips are very, very important. And one of the things it says, resurrection should lead us to forgive people. Resurrection should lead us to forgive people. And God can give us the resurrection power to forgive people. So if you have anybody in your heart that you cannot forgive, beg God to pump out your tire and give the grace to forgive. The mental health tips are right here. Make use of them. God bless you. I thank especially our leader, Deacon Dorothy Palmer, for helping in this service in the ways that she has before today and today. God bless you. Let's stand, everybody, as we close.
Oh, November birth month group, you're also required to meet at the choir stall. So if you're born in November, please meet at the choir stall now. Thank you. Let's receive the benediction. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father who sent Jesus, from Jesus who was raised from the dead, from the Holy Spirit who was poured out on us to raise us to new life. And may God's grace be with all his people this Easter day and forevermore. Amen. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow as we greet people as we go.